Hello and welcome back to the channel once again. Today we are here with what I promised on my Instagram account. Uh, we took a poll and we ended up with this topic. We are going to be learning today about the integrated TB. TB is one of the most important topic with respect to medicine, PSM, community medicine which you call it, radiology and uh, orthopedics. So there is no way you can ignore TB and go to any of the exam, be it like FMG or NEET PG or CMS, whatever exam you give, at least in India, TB holds a really, really special place in examiner's head because this is something which you, which you get to see every day when you sit in an OPD or in any hospital or even if you see anyone with a chest issue or something like that, then 20%, 10% people are already having TB and it's, it's really common in India. So let's discuss more about it. Yeah, so the approach is uh, integrated because right now we know all the exams are focusing on integration, integration and integration. There is no such thing as specific subject or specific topic. You have to integrate it with, with whatever you know about other things and you have to club all the knowledge you have about the topic from everywhere you can gather it around from. So what I'm going to be doing is helping you out in that sector and... Um, the video and the slide i have made it in two parts this is the first part which will include uh, basically microbiology radiology and medicine psm and orthopedics i have left for the second part because uh, i don't want to tax you all too much and i don't want it to be a very long video because we tend to get bored during long videos i don't like making long videos i'm sure you don't like watching long videos none of us like long videos so there is absolutely no point making 30 40 slides in one long video and taking two hour lecture you better watch some app for that what i'm here for is the short and sweet high yield stuff which you cannot afford to miss this is not an exhaustive list the points i'm going to be giving is not exhaustive you can always add on to those like there is always something you can add on even on the apps or even the best teachers teach you there is always something an update or a, some silly point or some important point or some con controversial point you can always add on to it so please don't rely on like like it's like everything but it is the thing you must need to know like before you enter your FMG exam, if you don't know this, I would if I would be you, I wouldn't be confident enough going my FMG exam without knowing these points. Because TB in India for community medicine with the point of view of radiology, medicine, microbiology, all of it is really important. And we see it in day-to-day -day life. And these days, whatever they're asking is more of practical aspects and more of the things which we see in clinical practices most of the times. So those are the questions that are being asked most often with the change of pattern in the exam so yeah that's enough of me blabbering about the introduction of the topic and what we are going to do about it so let's get started so the microbiology points you cannot afford to miss is these this i have made it clear crisp and short if you know this at least you know the minimum basic required you cannot afford to miss these things and if you are lucky enough most of the questions will form from this or it will help you solve the question and you would get to an answer by eliminating the other options so the first point is mycobacterium tuberculosis is the main causative organism for tb as we all know it's a gram positive bacteria and non-spore forming as well obligate aerobe like obligate aerobe it's an obligate aerobe please remember we always get to conf get to confuse obligate aerobe and aerobe and those things so it is an obligate aerobe and the reason it is an obligate aerobe is due to g plus c content g plus c content is the cell wall content which you need to remember is just it might come as a one mark one liner fat kind of thing acid fast bacilli it's an acid fast bacilli afb it's very important i'm sure you must have heard it or seen this by now if you have ever read tv so the stain which we are using is the technique is this zeal nielsen staining and the compound which we are using is carbol fusion for the afb which which after staining what you will be able to see is bright red bacilli and this stain is because of the mycolic acid present in the cell wall of the bacillus all right so the fluorescent stain what about the fluorescent stain you just need to remember two names oramine and rhodamine and oramine and rhodamine are a uh, little cheaper and thus they are good for screening as well so conventional solid culture media used conventional solid culture media used for your mycobacterium tuberculosis is uh, lg media and it takes about six to eight weeks to grow the culture so we usually don't use solid culture nowadays it's just for uh, what to say theoretical purpose just for us to know the second thing which we need to know which we which is being used in practical these days as well as liquid culture liquid culture is done and it takes shorter time 
hence preferred over the solid culture whenever needed the need of liquid culture we would see when we would be discussing the algorithms of diagnosis in uh, psm when i'll be making the part 2 of this uh, tuberculosis we'll be looking at the algorithm with which we solve the mystery of a person being a tb patient or not so it's really like being sherlock holmes of medicine so i guess you would enjoy the second part as well as i enjoyed reading it i'm sure if 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 i'll be able to explain it in a good way then you're going to enjoy it as well so yeah let's go to the medicine and radiology part shall we so what you need to understand is the basic thing how the things are going on because uh, without a basic concept mugging up won't help you much like it will help you but you don't tend to have the confidence that you know a topic or you know a subject if you just mug up and have no concept behind it so i wouldn't want you to go that way so what you're going to do is uh, understand this this is a chart we took from uh, i took from a book a renowned book i think i took it from first aid maybe yeah i think that was it so yeah let's see so mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria comes in through your respiratory system you breathe someone coughs you breathe the bacilli entered inside and it usually tends to go into the right lung because the right side bronchus is uh, shorter and steeper like it's 2 cm and the left side is 5 cm and it, it's in alignment with the trachea like whenever the infection comes in the right side is more uh, tend to get the infection it's easier to get infected because of the course of it and the anatomy of it so there are hyalur nodes as you can see these are here these are the hyalur nodes hyalur nodes are present in the hilum hyla of the region this is the hyla of the region and the gone focus you need to remember these names these names are really important the gone focus usually mild uh, sorry usually mid or lower lobes the gone focus is usually seen in mid or lower lobes this is the primary infection this is your primary tuberculosis infection when you first got it and your body has it but but right now it's not a disease okay what we need to know right now it's not a disease we don't call primary tuberculosis as a disease we don't treat primary tuberculosis as a disease so what's going to happen is in 90% of the cases this would heal this foci this focus gone focus is going to heal in 90% of the patients and it is going to heal by fibrosis and calcification so fibrosis and calcification uh, are the two methods by which it's going to heal fibrosis usually happens in the lung parenchyma whatever the consolidation is having in the lung parenchyma heals with fibrosis whereas the lymph nodes hyalur lymph nodes which are affected they heal by usually calcification so what's going to happen in the rest 10% of the patient or 7 to 8% of the patient if these patients are usually immunocompromised patients and progressive primary tuberculosis is the term given to these conditions because the healing process is not here like the complete healing will not happen here and thus we call it as ppt like progressive primary tuberculosis in case of aids or if someone is malnourished or from low socio economic status and the nourishment and the weight and thing those things are not that good so there is a risk of them entering this category so let's come back to the healing category again if this 90% patient this 90% people who are having the primary uh, consolidation healed and fibros if ever in case the reactivation of these things occur triggered by a lot of things this this reactivation can be triggered by a lot of things like if your immunity goes down and if you are having some other um, what to say chronic issue or chronic illness then then it might the bacilli might overpower your uh, immune system and get reactivated the other other thing what uh, we need to understand is sometimes it's not reactivation like the bacteria doesn't gets reactivated this one which is already dead or something but there is reinfection like there was already this consolidation it was shut down by the immune system fibros calcified everything but somehow the infection occurred again the reinfection again happens and then it converts into secondary tb so what we need to understand is the secondary tb is the disease which what in india we are going to treat the treatment is given for secondary tb and not primary tb it is said that in india like country where the population is high and thing and and the social economic status and other factors considered most of the people are infected with the primary tb like most of us have this gone focus inside us somewhere so it's not that alarming only if you are unfortunate and you get it reactivated or reinfected then only it converts into secondary tb so what happens in secondary tb the fibrocaceous cal- cavity lesion in the upper lobe so the vq ratio is um higher in the upper lobe of the lung so mostly the secondary tb is the secondary tb consolidation is usually usually observed in the upper lobe of the lung and 
most commonly in the right side although it can happen on the left side as well once it gets starts getting infected too much it can spread to both of the side but most probably at the beginning of it or commonly we see it on the right side so this happens and then localized destruction of the disease course runs which causes uh, cavitation cessation scarring and things like that and this can also move to other systemic organs like tb can happen everywhere as you must have been knowing except nail hair tb can tb can really really happen anywhere so yeah uh, and about this progressive primary tuberculosis in immunocompromised patients they can go undergo progressive lung diseases which can be uh, due to multiple multiplication rapid multiplication of bacteria can also be there and this because of the hematogenous spread the miliary tb occurs miliary tb means it's in, it's in your blood and it's going everywhere and you cannot like you it, it's really hard to uh, look for it so it will go to your brain it will go to your vertebra it will go to your lungs liver spleen adrenal joints bones anywhere miliary tb can really travel to uh, travel to any place in your body because of the circulation because it's in the circulation uh, actually so this is the basic concept i'm taking much time explaining this because without this it will be a little hard for you in the future to understand things why we do what diagnostic al- algorithm and what things are done in practical tb diagnosis so at least this much this thing you should know this is the most basic thing and this is the must thing you should know so let's move on I- i'm sure you know already this by now so next thing is which one is the tb primary tb or secondary tb we already discussed that while discussing the le- uh, last one which is a uh, secondary tb that is post primary tb that occurs due to the reactivation or reinfection is what we treat most common site involved is the apical right upper lobe right upper lobe is the most commonly involved area because of the vq high vq ratio there vq ratio is the ventilation perfusion ratio i'm sure you must be knowing that from physiology if you don't just go through it once type in wikipedia and you'll know what it is hallmark of secondary tb is cavitation this this is a important question that what is the hallmark of secondary tb because you won't see a cavitation in primary tb there is just a gone complex or gone focus but there is no cavitation as as of such and then it comes cuff with hemoptysis can be seen in secondary tb if it's mild it's usually involving pulmonary artery if it's severe it's most commonly involving bronchial artery so these are the things small things but very important uh, impact in your understanding in your concept and in your question solving so this you would remember then it would be good next thing is when would you evaluate for tb in india this is a question you would you would find very helpful when you'll start sitting in uh, your medicine rotations or when the professor asks asks you about the patient what should we do and what sh- what is why you're calling it a tb so these points are going to help you in doing your internship as well so low grade fever night sweats and evening rise in temperature is one of the one of the indicative of a person having tb in india cough with hemoptysis more than 2 weeks hemoptysis is blood in your uh, sputum so obviously malaise or weight loss 5% of weight loss in 15 months what we do in opd or what we do during internship is we ask patient if we if we are suspective of uh, a patient having tb but there are no other symptoms so we are, we we treat him symptomatically and when we ask him to measure his weight in 15 days of interval and come to us on the next visit and then we'll assess uh, if we can put him into the tb category or not including other diagnostics tests uh, of course so yeah the next thing is uh, no weight gain with the history of contact that is for the pediatric cases in pediatric cases if the child is not gaining weight and if he has a history of contact of a tb patient for example his grandfather his mother or his father or his friend has tb or someone had tb and he is a direct contact person history of contact is there and then he's not gaining weight in a couple of months so then it's indicative of tb you need to you need to look into it pyrexia of unknown causes p u c so pyrexia of unknown causes is one of the uh, classical thing as well because in india whenever you think of pyrexia of unknown causes the first thing comes into into your mind is the first thing should come into your mind is uh, tb of course so in psn we call the uh, we call such cases as presum- presumptive cases of tb we take these signs as presumptions because these signs are presumptive of that the patient which we are seeing might be uh, infected with tb but we can only confirm it by diagnosing and investigating and doing the tests and things like that so what i'm going to do is next is radiological foci and complexes in tb which is really important Uh, so let's get started i'm going to be helping you with the tricks how to remember it small little tricks i hope it's uh, helpful so just uh, bear me for a while more and it's not much longer anymore 
so the first is gone focus gone focus we already saw is the primary focus primary tb focus which uh, you see in the beginning of uh, when someone gets infected the second thing which we see is gone complex which is also known as rank is complex this is nothing but the gone focus plus the uh, lymph node involved basically gone complex or rank is complex is the gone focus plus the lymph node involved in the area okay so these are the two the next is simon's focus and simon's focus simon and simon are quite similar so there there tend to be a lot of confusion simon focus is at apex simon is at apex simon is leading the world okay just remember it like that simon is at the apex and it's it's seen in the primary tb okay because we are reading it after gones so just know this that it's still the primary thing are going on so simon's focus is seen in at the apex and we see it in the primary tb simon's focus whereas is seen is the liver how would you remember simon's as liver there is no connection there is no nothing so just remember that simon's have a d d you can remember that it's duodenum and duodenum is closer to what liver this side is uh, the left side is pancreas the other side is liver so simon's is the liver foci okay next we go is pulse focus and asmen's focus pulse focus and asmen's focus are pulse is supraclavicular foci and asmen is infra infraclavicular foci how you going to remember is this is a disease okay so in disease the things are not going to be normal things are obviously abnormal so what you going what what is going to happen the disease the tb is supposed pulling the foci to up you pull it up right so pull it up which means up means supraclavicular above the clavicle so your the disease is pulling it up so this is a supraclavicular foci asman is you can see asman as asman asman means uh, sky and sky is usually up but this is a disease sky cannot be up sky would be down so asman foci will always be down so it's it's infraclavicular it's below the clavicle so that's how you can remember it it's a small trick i used to remember it which i'm sharing here so uh, once again if you want to know it what it is pulse focus is it's going to pull it where you pull it you pull it above you pull it up so it's going to pulse focus is going to be in a supraclavicular foci asman asman is up but it's a disease it cannot be up so it's going to go down asman is infraclavicular so it's below so this is how a uh, small little trick you can use to remember is then the third thing is rich focus rich focus is is i used to find it very funny when i used to study it in my days that um, in every movie you know whenever we see any movie or anything uh, netflix series rich people don't die of small things like they won't die of malaria dengue or diarrhea or anything they usually have like rich diseases so they they, they would be having like uh, no offense no offense it's it's just to remember so rich people are usually the in the movies they always usually show that rich people have brain tumor they don't have headaches they don't have migraines they seriously have brain tumors and things like that so that's how you can remember it rich focus and go, going to be in the brain parenchyma right so pulse focus pulling it up supraclavicular asman focus asman is up but it cannot be up it's going to go down so infraclavicular rich focus rich people always die of brain tumors in movies so yeah it's going to be brain parenchyma next is vigards vigards uh, i used to have a lot of problem remembering vigards but there is a trick to remember it vigards is in pulmonary vein so v and v vigards and vein so that's how you can remember it. it's a little trick actually if you are done with all the others you don't even need to remember vigards the option you can uh, mark it correct by just eliminating the options like eliminating the wrong options right but but still you can remember it like vigards v means vein vein is only one vein we are having here which is pulmonary vein involvement is there so that's what it is gone's focus gone complex which is also known as rank is complex simon's focus at the apex simon's duodenum liver pulse focus pulling up supraclavicular asman foci asman is going down infraclavicular rich focus brain rich people die of brain tumors in movies so brain parenchyma vigards vigards remind me of veins so it's pulmonary vein so thank you so much for staying here till long i know it 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 became a little longer this session or this episode of integrated tv but i'm going to soon come up with the part 2 which where i would include the diagnosis algorithms and the treatment regime which is a part of medicine as well as community medicine and of course we are going to talk about some of the topics some of the tv uh, like pot spine tv it's important in orthopedics so stay tuned keep studying exams are coming closer and closer and uh, stay safe uh, i'll see you in the next episode thank you so much good night